Hey guys, what's up? In this video we will be practicing some more welds and uh, doing a gas lens comparison. But before we get into all that, I'd like to quickly go over the current state of things. You can see on my welding table I've got some cardboard clipped to its sides and that's to keep any draft from blowing the argon around while I'm welding. And this is my makeshift uh, torch holder. I put this uh, board here to stop the fans in the welder from making a draft. That was actually a problem when I first got the welder. And uh, welding hood. So I got this new Miller uh, passive welding hood. And here's my usual one. It's a Jackson and it is a auto darkening hood. It's a bit heavier than uh, passive hood, and this is the new Miller passive hood, and it is lighter. Uh, this is the passive filter I started using, and uh, it was a recommendation by Alistair of Duncan Cycles. He recommended I pick up a passive shade 9 gold coated filter. So I did and man what a difference. Uh, I can see so much better with this filter and uh, it gives you like a wider uh, field of view. What's normally dark on the sides you can you can see more. So uh, yeah thanks Alistair. And uh, finally we will be comparing these two gas lenses. Uh, the one I'm holding now on the right that is my usual number 8 lens. And the one on the left is a 1.25 inch uh, Pyrex glass lens. Okay, so for all these welds, I am using ER70S2 filler rod uh, 035. And uh, for this first tube, I'm running the uh, number 8 gas lens at 15 CFH. I'm using 1.2 pulses per second, roughly that, 10% uh, background current, and 50% pulse time on. And there's the weld. You can see a little gray area. That's because I starved the puddle and it got too hot. Okay, now I'm doing the other side. So what happens when you uh, starve the puddle, uh, you're just not getting enough filler in there or uh, a few times I just missed the puddle completely and I was just melting the, uh, the tubes with no filler and the filler actually makes the weld run cooler because you're dipping the filler in there and cooling it and so when you miss that's when it gets too hot and you'll see in this next uh, shot when I'm done. You can see that gray area in the middle again. Okay, for this one I am trying to run it a little cooler. So I'm backing off the pedal a little more. And uh, one thing I noticed is uh, the filler rod angle. Uh, when the angle is too high it's really hard to kind of sneak it into the puddle and uh, especially when you come around the tube and you get near the end. So this one I kind of lowered it and it seemed to work out a little better. Alright, so now on this one I'm running it at... Uh, I turned it up from 15 CFH to 18 CFH. And uh, I'm feeding the puddle a little more, or trying to be cautious of that. And uh, I end up stopping early because I, I touched the tungsten into the puddle. That was that snappy sound you heard. Okay, so uh, the hood, the 
the Miller hood was getting uh, a little uncomfortable and so I decided I'm just gonna keep using this hood from now on so what I'm doing now is I'm, I, I actually made these uh, I sewed these pads to go inside the hood and I'm taking them off of my uh, Jackson hood and now putting them on my uh, Miller hood the passive hood okay back in business so uh, for this one I'm running 18 CFH 1.2 pulses per second 10% background current and I turned the pulse time on down to 35% and so when I turned it down to 35%, it didn't give the puddle enough time to form. I could have run the, uh, the puddle a little hotter, but uh, I didn't, and I got a lumpy weld. Same settings again, except this time I'm running the puddle a little bit hotter. So uh, something to keep in mind is that you can change your pulse settings to what feels comfortable for you. What's important is that you adjust your uh, amperage, you know, the amount you press down on the foot pedal and your uh, travel speed to work with those settings. So one of the things that happened to me when I decided to try pulse TIG welding is I thought I'm gonna use pulse and then my welds are gonna look awesome like all the other nice looking wells I see uh, using this technique and um, I quickly learned that it doesn't matter if you're using pulse or if you're using um, rule of threes or lay wire like that stuff all helps but the same rules apply the same basic welding rules apply your torch angle matter is still going to matter uh, your filler rod angle is going to matter, your travel speed, uh, the amount of amperage you're putting into the weld, it all still matters. And the last weld on these tubes, uh, I ended up turning the pulse time on uh, from 27%, I turned it up to 45%. And I'm running around 20 uh, background amps, and around 1.2 pulses per second. So I ended up uh, sticking to these settings, or somewhere in the ballpark close to these settings, and I like this a lot. I think it's a, uh, they're good settings for me right now, uh, it may change later when I get more um, accustomed to dipping the rod and pulsing, but for now these settings feel good. Alright so those welds were with the number 8 lens, and now we're switching over to the 1.25 inch, uh, I think it's 1.25 or close to that, um, Pyrex glass lens. Okay, so immediately uh, sparks, which means uh, not enough CFH. So I turn it up to 25 and it's still not enough. And then 30. And uh, that seemed to do the trick. So you got a larger lens and you're needing to stick the tungsten out a little further, you're gonna need to turn up the CFH. Okay, if you are messing around with your settings and you're trying different things, 
Uh, your welds are probably not going to be looking that great and uh, just keep in mind that once you what you want to do is you want to find uh, some base settings that you are happy with and then stick to those settings so now that I found my base settings I'm able to focus more on my travel speed and torch angle and heat input However, the, uh, the only thing that's really different here is my tungsten is extended out further than with the number 8 lens, and the cup is larger, the, the, the gas lens is larger, so it's, I ended up with this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's because I just was not used to using a large gas lens. Okay, so for all those welds, I was running at 35 CFH, and uh, for some reason, this joint, this part of the tube, this is the corner of the tube, uh, it was sparking a lot. So I turned the CFH down to 30, and everything seemed to be fine after that. So my theory is that uh, in the corner, if the CFH is too high, it's creating more of a draft. Maybe the air is swirling around more in there, and you got to turn the CFH down in that case. And, uh, I think I stuck to 30 uh, for the rest of the welds, and that seemed to work fine. All right, so can you guys see the chalky stuff around the weld? Um, I don't know what this is. I looked all over the internet and. Uh, couldn't find any information on it. The only thing I could find was like pictures of aluminum where I think that's more common but it's weird it's like uh, was this happening all the time I can't remember if I just never noticed it before so if you guys know what that is please leave a comment and uh, yeah enlighten me I'd love to know what that stuff is or how to prevent it Went too slow on that one and it turned yellow. Alright, so I touched down into the puddle and they, that's where that little mark is there. You can see a little black spot. And you can see I just missed, uh, I didn't put filler rod into one of the puddles. And that happened because the rod actually got stuck in the puddle and by the time it like came out again, I it was like I couldn't position, to, position it again. Okay, so for this last one, uh, you'll see there's a, some sparks and it's because the argon is it's still the same uh, CFH, but what I had done is I extended the tungsten out so that I could reach into the corner better, and uh, it wasn't by much, but it was just enough for the CFH to not be enough. All right, and now for our comparison. The one on the left is the number eight lens, and the one on the right is the 1.25 inch lens and you know I really cannot see a difference 
they both pretty much look the same. Uh, the one on the right has slightly better welds, and that's only because I was welding better. I don't think that had anything to do with the cup. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to stick to the number 8. And that is because it's smaller, it's easier to get in the corner, I don't need to extend the tungsten out as far, and I pretty much can set it to uh, around 20 CFH and I'm done with it. But for the uh, larger lens, it, it's really finicky when it comes to CFH. Like a 5 CFH difference could be, it could be sparking or it could be um, too much CFH. So yeah, I'm going to stick to the number 8. Okay guys, that's it for this week. Next week I will be practicing some more and um, maybe get some rule of threes in there. And also I will try out manual pulse. Please join me for that and I'll see you guys later.